Okay, lesson two, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll uh, go over this. I think some of you have seen this before, but we'll go over it as if you don't remember anything. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem is a really useful tool when we're looking at right angle triangles. So one of the corners has to have a 90 degree corner. And usually that is marked with a little box in there. Um, the formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And the a and b, it doesn't really matter which one you call a and b, but these are called the legs of the triangle. And what is across, always uh, directly across um, from the right angle, that is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse uh, is going to be the longest side of the triangle, and it is directly opposite the right angle. Um, the legs, A and B, are always added up in the formula, but the hypotenuse is always by itself. So sometimes these can be marked with any letter. It doesn't have to be A, B, C. You always have to know, though, the one side that is the longest side across from the 90 is the one in the formula that is all by itself. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Why that formula even exists is because of this. What they found, Pythagoras found, was if this is a 90 degree corner here, what is pretty interesting is the area of the square that you would draw off this hypotenuse, this area here is um, equal to the area of the two smaller squares added together. That's where the formula comes from. So if this side is side C, then you can imagine this might be a C and this is a C. And the area, if I did length times width, the area for this square is c squared. The area for this uh, square, if I had, if this was side b and this is side b, length times width, b times b would be b squared. And a, if this side was a and this side was a, and I did the formula here for length times width, I'd have a squared. So what Pythagoras realized is this only works if it's a right triangle. It has to have a 90 degree corner. If I add these two squares up, this one here and this one here, it should give me the same area as this one here. So length times width, the area of the squares inside. That's where the formula comes from. Um, so we're gonna practice using this. That note, the hypotenuse is always C. Um, it's the one on the longest side. <clears throat> and then other ways you might see this, some teachers use H for hypotenuse. Um, sometimes if this was perhaps on a Cartesian plane or, or a graph, you might see something like X and Y equals the, the R squared. Really any variable, um, any variable would work as long as you know that this one here would have to be the longest side. That would have to be the hypotenuse. So if you didn't have a nice scientific calculator to figure all of this out, some really special triangles uh, that people have known about for a really long time are 3, 4, 5 or 5, 12, 13. What these are, they're called Pythagorean triples. So if you just picked up three pieces of wood and you wanted to build a right triangle, it's not necessarily true that you would get a perfect right triangle uh, from pieces of wood. If you picked up one that was two feet long and four feet long and six feet long and you tried to make those into a triangle, you probably could, but it might not be a right triangle. So one that they know um, works always is if one side is three feet long, one side is four feet long, and one board is five feet long, that's a very special relationship um, because three squared plus four squared, that's nine plus 16, that actually equals five squared, which is 25. So this is a very special triangle. Um, and these are just some of the combinations that work, but not every three lengths when you put them together would give you a right triangle. So um, sometimes uh, builders and uh, people have these memorized. So if you were going to build a roof on a shed or something, as long as you went to the store and you got, if you didn't want it to be um, really steep, maybe 
you would buy boards that were 5 feet long, 12 feet long, and 13 feet long, and you would get a perfect right triangle when you put those together. So they are pretty special and rare. Um, when we look at some examples for the Pythagorean theorem, I always want you to write the formula down, which is nothing new. Um, so example one, what I want you to notice from this is there's the right angle, so that is side C. If I'm doing my formula, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, I want you to write that down. This time I don't actually know what C is, so I'm just going to write in C squared. And then I'm going to sub in my sides. So a lot of times students will say, well, which one of these is A and which one is B? Well, you know what? Because you're going to add them up. It doesn't even really matter. So if I put the 20 decimal 1 or the 5 decimal 2 first, it doesn't matter. So 5 decimal 2 squared plus 20 decimal 1 squared. So we're actually trying to find the length of side C. We're trying to find the length of the unknown side. So what you would do first, because of bed mass, I'd actually want to find out what 5 decimal 2 times 5 decimal 2 is. If you don't have a scientific calculator at home, you can actually just go to Google and you can type in scientific calculator. And I was going to do 5 decimal 2 squared, so 5 decimal 2. And then this little button here is the squared, or the, sorry, the exponent button. So there's, if you hit that and the exponent is 2, it will give you the answer. So if you don't have uh, your scientific calculator at home, the scientific calculator online works just as well. So we know 5 decimal 2 times 5 decimal 2 is 27 decimal 04. So we might have decimals that we have to work with. And 20 decimal 1 times 20 decimal 1 is 404 decimal 01. And then bed mass says that you would actually add those together. So if I add those two numbers together, I get 431 decimal 05. But that is that would be weird. So if this this side up here was 5 decimal 2 and this was 20 decimal 1, that would be kind of weird if this was actually over 400 meters long. Uh, but that's the answer for c squared. So to unsquare something, we actually take the square root. You'd have to take the square root of both sides. That would just give you side C. So you're also going to have to be able to find the square root of a number using a scientific calculator or the one online. And I get 20.76 meters, which makes a lot more sense. This answer for side C always has to be the biggest. It's not much bigger than this side down here, but it is a little bit bigger. As long as it's always the longest side, you've probably done it correctly. This one over here is a little different. So these are kind of the two types of Pythagorean theorem questions you're going to get. Here, when I look across from this 90 degree angle, that is side C. That's a little different. I already know what side C is, but I don't know side A. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. This is a one different type of question you might get. So if I know side C is 5 decimal 3, I would write it in under the C, but it's squared. And then A, I don't know A, so maybe this time I don't know one of the variables on the right side of the formula. And this is 4 decimal 2 squared. I would like you to go ahead and find the square of 5 decimal 3. 5 decimal 3 times 5 decimal 3. So that's 28 decimal 09. A lot of times I'm using two decimal places. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, 4 decimal 2 times 4 decimal 2 is 17 decimal 64. Now I can't just add these up though because they aren't like terms. So I actually want to isolate the A. So this 17 decimal 64, I would want to move it over there. And remember, when you move something over and it was positive, now it's going to become a negative. So I've got to subtract 17.64. And that would give me a squared. So I subtract the two numbers and I get 10.45. But that is a squared. That's not what I want. I want to know what just a is. So I would take the square root of both sides and I get 3.23 centimeters and that's A. 
So a little bit different. You either add the two sides up you know, or if you know the C, but you or the hypotenuse, but you don't know one of the legs, you would end up having to always subtract. Whether you were finding A or B, you're going to have to subtract. So I might start this question by first finding the length of side A. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And I'm going to sub in what I know. I know that the 11 is the hypotenuse. And side A, I don't know side A. Sometimes you might not know side B. So that means B must be 7.5, and I'd square each one. So be careful. It's not 11 times 2. It's 11 times 11, which is 121. And I don't know what the A is still, but the 7 decimal 5 squared is 56 decimal 25. So that is 7 decimal 5 times 7 decimal 5. I want to get the A alone, so I want to move the 56 decimal 25 to the left side. And that's going to equal A squared. I would go ahead and subtract those two numbers and get 64 decimal 75. And then last step, I want to take the square root of both sides so that I would just have A. And I'm still liking to see some units in your answers, so feet would be kind of nice to see. So 8 decimal 0, 05 feet would be this up here, this length here. The question did ask, though, to calculate the area of the sail. So from our formula sheet, I know that the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So my base, well, the base is the bottom of the triangle that is perpendicular to the height. And I found the base over here. So I know the base is 8 decimal 0, 5 times the height is 7.5 and I'd multiply those together and then divide by 2. So when I multiply them together I get 60 decimal 375 divided by 2 and I get 30 decimal 2 but that's area so that's square feet. And since it is a word problem uh, involving this uh, unhappy lady, it looks like, uh, we would say the, therefore, um, the area of the sale is 30 decimal 2 square feet. Okay, there is a little bit of homework uh, listed down at the bottom, but I also will attach the homework pages for you and circle the ones that I want you to try.